So we're back down at a very familiar spot for Electric Bike Report with two bikes that are also familiar to Electric Bike Report. We are at the base of our test hill, which we call Hell Hole. It's a 12 to 15% hill for about a third of a mile long. And we've brought two bikes we've already tested on this hill, the Tower Beach Babe and the Blix Soul Eclipse. These are two electric beach cruiser bikes. So we're here again, frankly, because Tower has asked us to come back. We tested the Beach Babe about a month ago, and it did a really impressive result up this hill. It's a 500 watt rear hub motor. It's a beach cruiser bike. It's not exactly built for hill climbing, and it doesn't have the biggest motor of, of all of the bikes that we've tested up this hill. But it threw down a time that was fairly impressive. It was not that far off some of the class three 750 watt e-bikes that we have tested. Tower asked us to come back out here with this thing set up as a class three e-bike. So in its class two settings, it's maxed out at 18 miles an hour. And at class three, we can set it up to 25 miles an hour. So what that does is it kind of changes the power profile, changes how the bike delivers wattage and torque. So theoretically, it could give us a different result up this hill. We recently tested this Blix Soul. It's a 750 watt rear hub class two e-bike. And it happened to put down one of the quickest times up this hill, period. So are the event and adventure step through currently holds our record on the EBR hill test. This bike is just one second off. So it's a pretty good proxy, even though it is a class two e-bike versus a class three, still a pretty good proxy for those 750 watt, really quick bikes. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna redo our hill tests with these bikes put head to head against one another to see if this 500 watt rear hub motor can put times up that either beat or rival the very fast 750 watt rear hub motor of the Blix Soul Eclipse. So we finished up our bout of hill testing, second round actually, on both of these two bikes. And the results actually came back pretty similar to what we saw the first time, despite the tower getting an upgrade in its classifications. So the tower made it up the hill on PAS5 in one minute and 11 seconds, and then one minute and 35 seconds on throttle. The Blix Soul made it up in 101 on PAS5, and 119 on throttle only. So we are still seeing a difference between these two bikes. There are some things I'd like to point out though. So despite the tower getting an upgrade from 18 miles an hour max to 25 miles an hour max, we still saw a really similar result to the first time that this bike went up the hill. So when Pierce Kettering, my colleague, took this thing up the hill during the actual review of the bike, 
he made it up in one minute and 12 seconds on pedal assist only, and I made it in one minute and 11 seconds. So an improvement of one second. Did we see a difference between the class two settings and the class three settings of this bike? One second difference. So a little bit. I noticed it certainly at the very bottom of the hill uh, where we have the flat run up. The bike never cut out. When I did the Blix up the hill, I did. It actually cut out about right where we're standing. We're probably, you know, 30 yards from the base of the hill where things start to get steep. And I was already feeling the motor kind of bump up against that class two 20 mile an hour max. But that really didn't matter because that 750 watt motor, when it actually, things got steep and things started requiring torque, that bike went really, really fast with a 101. And that time of one minute, one second is also very comparable to when my colleague Pierce Kettering, again, took this bike up the hill during its individual review when it did 59 seconds. There is a little bit of context to this test that I would like to add. And that's the fact that this hill is only a third of a mile long. A third of a mile is just really not that much distance to cover and a difference of 12 to 15 seconds between bikes is actually pretty significant at the top. It's not at all to bash the tower or anything like that, but while we're talking just in terms of seconds right here, in a test this short, 10 seconds matters, five seconds matters. We see plenty of bikes that are separated by one or two seconds, and it's actually noticeable when you're riding it up the hill. And while the tower did do well and did put up a time that was 10, 12, 15 seconds off some of the faster 750 watt rear hub motor bikes that we've tested. The difference in average speed up the hill is very measurable. We're talking a difference of 18 miles an hour to something in the ballpark of 12 to 13. So take our hill test with just a little bit of grain of salt that just a few seconds can actually make quite a bit of difference. Just kind of to bring this video to an end, you really shouldn't discount the tower's climbing ability. A minute and 12 seconds or a minute and 11 seconds, depending on which class you have it in, is super impressive for a cruiser bike, especially a 500 watt rear hub motor cruiser bike. These things are not hill climbers. They're not designed to be, but tower is relatively proud of how they've tuned this motor to go up hills. It's, it's kind of one of their big, big champion points of their bike. I think they're kind of valid in that. It, it does go uphill at a decent pace. We did notice some things and specifically in the actual individual review of the bike that Pierce commented on. I also independently tested the bike. That is the motor vibration. It did make a little bit of vibrations when I took it up this hill, both on the throttle, both on the PS5 settings. It wasn't as bad as we had tested it before, so it's a great climbing bike. So is the Soul though. So thank you. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sam Gross for Electric Bike Report.